Just try to imagine 37 million iPhones. That's how many Apple sold in just the last three months of 2011. On Tuesday, it announced revenue of more than $46 billion for the quarter ending December 31st. Tim Cook, the man who replaced the late Steve Jobs as CEO of Apple, told Wall Street analysts the company couldn't keep up with global demand for the new iPhone 4S. We didn't bet high enough, he said. The world is in love with everything Apple. But here's a question. Have you ever wondered where all that stuff gets made? I had never thought, ever, in a dedicated way about how they were made. For performer Mike Daisy, that is the centerpiece of a monologue, the agony and the ecstasy of Steve Jobs. Shenzhen is a city of 14 million people. It is larger and denser than New York City. It is the third largest city in all of China and is the place where almost all of your comes from. The show is an onstage expose of working conditions at a factory in Shenzhen, owned by a company called Foxconn, which manufactures electronics under contract for practically every major brand you can name, including Apple. Foxconn is the biggest company you've never heard of. Foxconn makes over 50% of all the electronics in the world. The Foxconn plant in Shenzhen employs more than 400,000 people. If you've never been to the economic uh, engines of China, these giant buildings stacked up with people are, um, they're just staggering. It almost takes your breath away. Daisy went to Shenzhen. Foxconn wouldn't let him in, so he stood outside the main gate with his translator, talking to workers at shift change. In my first two hours, of my first day at that gate, I met workers who were 14 years old. I met workers who were 13 years old. I met workers who were 12. Do you really think Apple doesn't know? But what was news were the suicides. Well, while I was there, I was there in May and June of 2010, that's really at the peak of when the suicides were happening with, with, um, with kind of terrible regularity, where week after week, workers would go up onto the roofs of these buildings and throw themselves off the buildings. When you were there, were there nets around the building to prevent further suicides? There was, yes. So you saw those? I did. And how, what did that look like, looking up and seeing them? They look like, they look a lot like the nets you would put out to catch fish. From the spite of suicide at Foxconn, we began to question maybe the harsh management methods drive the workers to commit suicide. Debbie Chan is a project manager for SACOM, Students and Scholars Against Corporate Misbehavior, a labor watchdog group based in Hong Kong. SACOM reported at least 18 Foxconn workers committed suicide in 2010, and more tried. We began to um, interview the workers, and then many of them told us they have um, work pressure. If they made some mistake, they would be punished. Foxconn responded that the suicide rate at its plants in China was actually lower than the national average. But the world had noticed. Wow. Even comedian Stephen Colbert commented. A tragic state of affairs, and in response, Foxconn has taken action to ensure the mental health of their employees by making them sign a pledge vowing not to kill themselves. <laughs> done and done. Um, this is what Steve Jobs had to say. We're all over this. Um, Foxconn is not a sweatshop. I mean, you go to this place, and it's a factory, uh, but my gosh, I mean, they've got restaurants and movie theaters and hospitals and swimming pools, and I mean, it's a, it's a, for a factory, it's a pretty nice factory. So what then would drive workers to suicide? 
the pressure to produce, especially to keep up with demand for a hot device like a new iPhone, according to Mike Daisy. The official work day in China is eight hours long. That's a joke. I never met anyone who'd even heard of an eight-hour shift. Everyone I talked to worked 12-hour shifts, standard and often much longer than that. 14 hours a day, 15 hours a day. While I am in country, a worker at Foxconn dies after working a 34-hour shift. We have repeatedly asked Apple for comment and been told no. We have repeatedly asked Foxconn for access to its Shenzhen plant. No reply. Instead, we were referred to a London-based consulting firm, Impact Limited, paid by Apple, but only to address child labor issues among its suppliers. In my experience, their approach to this particular topic of, of dealing with child labor is, is at the very top end of industry practice. Dionne Harrison is director of operations. Asked if she'd been sent to Foxconn, we haven't been into Foxconn, so just for the record. <laughs> if you go to Foxconn's website, you discover that it's part of a huge Taiwan-based conglomerate called Han Hai Precision Industry Company, with plants all over the world, including the United States. Foxconn employs approximately a million people throughout China, not just in Shenzhen. It claims to follow strict industry standards of conduct, and to respect its workforce. A lot of companies have codes of conduct uh, or standards that they apply to their factory partners in China. And what we've learned is a lot of those standards are aspirational in nature. Uh, the market practices that a lot of these factories employ are well below those standards. Ian Spaulding heads In Fact, a consulting firm that helps companies in China improve working conditions. He won't say whether he works with Apple and Foxconn or talk about them specifically. It's important to note that they are by no means the only electronics makers implicated. It is common for factories to hide um, uh, working hours, to somehow um, uh, coach workers on what to say when auditors come to the factory. On January 13th, for the first time, Apple released a list of its major suppliers, and with it, its annual supplier responsibility report, showing that in 2011, it conducted 80% more audits than in 2010. The company's supplier code of conduct limits workers to a 60-hour, six-day week. By Apple's own data, only 38% of its suppliers complied. For SACOM, Apple's efforts are not good enough. Every time when we sent report statements to them, we did not even get any reply. From this kind of experience, we think that Apple is almost um, the most arrogant company. On Thursday, after a damning front page story in the New York Times, Apple CEO Tim Cook emailed his staff. Any suggestion that we don't care is patently false and offensive to us, he wrote. We are attacking problems aggressively. It would be easy to look for problems in fewer places and report prettier results, but those would not be the actions of a leader. And that's just the point for Mike Daisy. Why are we talking about Apple here, are, as opposed to, say, Microsoft or Dell or Samsung or any of the other companies that, that, that contract with the Foxcons of the world? Apple has said for decades that it wants to be a leader. I think far from Apple you know, sort of complaining that people have expectations of them, I think they should be delighted that people actually expect them to lead and to rally the rest of the industry. So where does that leave us? In 2012, it's virtually impossible to stop buying and using electronics made in Chinese factories for Apple or for anybody else. Our devices are so beautiful. Uh, especially the Apple devices, they're so gorgeous looking that it seems as though they were made by a machine. But the reality is they're assembled by hand, like uh, thousands of people work with their fingers putting together the tiny components. So much of our world is actually handmade, uh, even though it looks so modern. Uh, it's built on the bones of, of, of this labor, and we need to actually understand that.